So, I, I don't speak uh, Urdu very well, and I have drafted a speech here, but I'm going to cut it a little bit. Uh, one of the things that I, uh, as you notice that my wife Debbie's picture is over there with President Obama, who is a good friend of ours. I wanted to say, uh, before I give my talks and remarks, why education is important for Indian Muslims, I want to say that the, one of the things that they, they did not mention in my bio, that I have given $2.5 million to, to build Frank and Debbie's Islam Management Complex at Aligarh Muslim University because of General Shah. And I'm here to inaugurate uh, the auditorium at the management auditorium uh, at the Mass Communication Department, and that's the reason I came here from the United States to India. So good afternoon, distinguished guests, friends, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your warm welcome, and thank you for your hospitality. I want to express my deep gratitude for, for Armand Rizvi for bringing all of us together. We share a common bond with you through our shared history and shared heritage, and we are linked by common goals and a common commitment. Thank you, Dr. Rizvi, for your leadership. Your accomplishments are unmatched, unparalleled. You are a true leader. You are always inspiration for all of us. You provide the example, set the standard, we admire and appreciate all you do to make a positive impact and influence on in the people's lives. You are the giant whose shoulder we need to stand to carry the torch to light the way. Now it is the responsibility of the next generation <coughs> to do the same. I thank you, Mr. Jetley, for being here. And thank you, General Shah, who is a dear friend. And I love General Shah. Give him a big round of applause. It is truly an honor and humbling to receive this award from All India Minor Minorities Forum for Democracy for my contribution in the field of education, social science, particularly for welfare of minorities, technology, and my efforts in strengthening the tie between the United States and India. It is an honor because it recognizes for my life's work and doing something that I deeply love and care. It is an honor to, to be singled out from the thousands and thousands of graduates of Aligarh Muslim University who, because they received the same purpose-driven education that I did at AMU, have devoted their lives to making a difference. It is humbling to be given this award here at Maulana Azad Institute. I, I also want to say to Mr. Rizvi, that I hope one day this becomes a university, and I hope his cause will endure and his dream shall never die. As you probably know that I'm an Aligarian, I went to Aligarh Muslim University. What's best in me, I owe it to Aligarh Muslim University. So, Morana Azad was a true blazer, trailblazer, and difference maker. Maulana Azad was a scholar of the First Order, a leader of India's freedom movement and a fierce advocate for Hindu-Muslim unity. He saw no conflict between his Islamic religious belief, India is becoming an integrated national state. As, nations, as our nation's first education minister, he put education in the forefront for all, regardless of religion, or race, or status. In his memory, and what he stood for in the memory of Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan, the founder of Aligarh Muslim University, a man of equal repute, Azad, I want to take this occasion to say a few words about education, especially the education for the minorities and the need for the interfaith dialogue between Hindu and Muslims and various faiths in, in, in India. Let me begin by quoting Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan when he established AMU in 1872, he said, its graduates shall go forth to the length and breadth of this land to preach the gospel of inquiry of large-hearted tolerations 
and a pure morality. Sir Sayyid was right. He just ended, underestimated that how far we would do. Over the decades, tens of thousands of thousands of Aligarians have gone across the length and breadth of India around the world to make a difference because of education. If I had not received education at Aligarh Muslim University, I would have never crossed the Atlantic Ocean to realize the American dream. And that's the reason I want to talk to you a little bit about the situation that we have with Indian Muslims and minorities. It reminds us that how entrenched poverty in Indian Muslim community has become. The situation for many Muslim youth is desperate and heartbreaking. They share a city but not a community. They share a common dwelling but not in a common effort. They are smothered by the blanket of history and circumstances. It is the lack of education which leads to lack of opportunity that breeds violence and fuels frustrations and desperations. It's the education that provides the avenue for the participation of the 21st century careers, competency to compete in a global economy, and the capacity to contribute to lifting fellow Muslims out of poverty and deprivation. Education is, a, is an opportunity creator, is a, bridge to, is a bridge to the future. Education empowers the mind and uplifts the soul. Education frees the human mind from the shackles of ignorance. As President Obama said, education is the currency of the 21st century. It is important for all of us to realize that without education, we cannot get out of the poverty. And especially the education for the Muslim woman, or for that matter for minorities, is heartbreaking. They must be able to participate fully along the entire education continuum. Their participation, especially the women's, is, is pivotal for the future of India and the world. As I said, education is the gift that keeps on giving. It's an opportunity creator and a bridge builder. For a, for a Muslim family, education prepares them to be change agent. Too many Muslim families are trapped in poverty because of lack of education. With their education, the Muslims and minorities can educate and equip their children to escape their trap. I firmly believe that education is a powerful equalizer opening doors to all the Muslims and minority to lift themselves out of the poverty. For India, education delivers on the promise of the largest democracy in the world. Centered to that promise are equality, opportunity, and inclusive economic mobility. Education levels the playing field and makes that promise a reality. Before I go further, I would like to talk a little bit about, briefly, about why we should have a dialogue between Hindu and Muslims and Jain and Parsi and Sikhs. Because remember, we are in this together. I strongly, I strongly believe that interfaith dialogue brings the people together, increases religious and cultural unity, it promotes building bridges, breaking down the barriers, <coughs> and coming together to create a shared sense of community. India has long succeeded because it is a diverse, inclusive, and tolerant. I, I firmly believe that diverse society is a strength because it brings the people together, and it enriches a nation and ensures that all people have equal chance to succeed. We need to step up, speak up, and speak out by rejecting the voices that seek to divide us, and especially the women's rights, human rights, and the minority rights. Therefore, all of us together should continue to build a stronger, fairer, and more just India. We need to stand together 
and together we can help shape a better future. I ask you to remember the fundamental acceptance of the quality of other religions by not looking to the heavens and, the, and to the gods to whom we worship, but by looking at the earth and the people and the family that we are. We need to strengthen the bond that binds us as a family. There's a lot that unites us, there's a that divides us. Our relationships should not be defined by differences, but what we can do together by being a difference maker. Our bonds are stronger than the differences that too often drive us apart. In closing, let me leave you with the two thoughts from Maulana Azad. Maulana Azad said, education imparted by heart can bring revolution in society. He also said, let us sacrifice today so that our children can have a better tomorrow. India has made a lot of progress in Maulana Azad spoke those words in its establishment as a nation in 1947. We need to continue to make the sacrifices that are necessary to ensure that all the children of India have a better tomorrow. That's the, our challenge and opportunity as an interfaith difference maker. It will do well to remember that no religion, no race, no culture, no nation has a monopoly on wisdom. Wisdom belongs to all if you're willing to work hard aim high and pursue your dream. Let us never forget the values that we share, that believe with education and hard work, and with sacrifice, we can give our children a better future so that they can enjoy the lives of the equal opportunity, dignity, and inclusive economic mobility. Let us dedicate ourselves to draw upon the values and the spirit that have always defined the greatness of our community. Let me leave you with some thoughts on redoubling our efforts to reject the hate and bigotry in all forms. We should embrace the richness of religious diversity. We should not allow in planting the seeds of the discord and divisiveness. We should rise above the angry partisanship and heal the wounds of division. Please remember, when Indian Muslims and minority move up the ladder of success, when they get ahead, they can change the face of India and the landscape of the world. But when they succeed, India succeed and the world succeed. And it is very important to understand and remember that India cannot succeed. When the, when the Muslims and minorities are held back, they must be part of the India's equal partnership in the inclusive mobility of India. So thank you again for the award that, that means so much to me. And God bless you all that you have done for India in the past, what you will do in the future to make India a better place for all of us, regardless of who we are. Thank you.